Alright guys, so this is the articulation points algorithm. It starts off by performing a depth first search in the diagram where 1 is less than 2 and A is less than B. All that really means is that you're going to take something, let's say you had a D, and if you were going to F or C, you would pick C because C is comes in the alphabet before F does. Okay, so pretty straightforward. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, so you perform a depth first search, and then you mark all the numerators of the vertices in the number they were reached at, starting at vertex 1, would be vertex 1, so on and so forth. And you find the denominators using special rules. Um, basically, if a vertex has no children, the denominator of the sort of fraction is going to be the same as the numerator. If the vertex has children, then the denominator is going to be equal to the lowest vertex that you can go back to. Um, obviously, assuming that you can't go back to something if the arrow is not reversed. So um, you can use at most one back edge and must stop immediately after using the back edges. So we're going to figure this out real quick and then there, uh, there are some rules on how to find if it's an articulation point but we'll get into that in a second. So let's first perform the depth first search. This is uh, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Uh, let's pick a good color and starting at A we go to uh, whatever we can um, so we pick B first, then we go to, uh, well, E is less than G, and we can keep going, so uh, we can go to G. Now we can't go back to B, because um, we've already visited B, so we backtrack from G to E, from E to B, from B all the way back to A, and then we go to D, and then we go to C, and finally we backtrack and go to F. Okay, so we label these in the order we visited them. So one, this was two, this was three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, now we have to find the numerators, or I'm sorry, the denominators. Now basically all we're trying to do here, this is very uh, difficult to conceptualize at first, but it's actually it's pretty simple once uh, I think it's explained properly. Basically, um, uh, for starters, the root is always going to be 1. And what you're going to do is you're going to look and see how far back can you go. You're trying to go as close to uh, vertex 1, or the starting vertex as you can. So from B, what can I go to to get lower? Well, it turns out um, I can go to 3 or 4, but those are both higher, which means the lowest thing I can do is actually just stay where I am, and that's at 2. So E, what is the lowest I can get to? Um, well, you would say 3 initially, but there's a special rule. It's the back edge rule. This here is called a back edge. We haven't used it. Um, but it's a back edge. You can use at most one back edge, and you must stop immediately after using the back edge, but you can use it once. So, three, actually the closest thing it can get to, um, to or get to one, is it can get all the way back to B, because you can go from E to G, and then from G, using a back edge, you can get to two. So the closest it can get to is two. And actually G is the same. G can get to two as well. So if we look down here, D, the closest D can get to uh, 1 is actually itself. And C, the closest it can get to it is itself. And the closest F can get to it is, well, I said 7, or 6, but I meant 7, um, is itself. So now we have these numerators and denominators. Now this is important because we use this to find articulation points. Now the rule states that the root is an articulation point if and only if it has more than one child. So we go to A and we say, does A have more than one child? Yes, it has two. It has B and D. So A is our first articulation point. Perfect. And now for the other ones, we have to use this little formula. So any other vertex is an articulation point if and only if its num or numerator is less than or equal to its child's low or the denominator. So what that means is we look at vertex B, and let's, uh, let's write it here, and if we look at vertex B, um, we look at the numerator, so that would be 2. 
and we compare the numerator to that of its children, uh, the children's denominator. So numerator of the vertex, denominator of the children. So is 2 less than or equal to 2 or 2? Yes, it is. So that means B is also an articulation point. Okay, perfect. So we do that for E. Is E, um, let's do this real quick. So is E numerator less than or equal to 2? Well, is 3 less than or equal to 2? No, it's not, so it is not. Um, we can quickly see that G is not as well. 4 is not less than um, 2. We can go to D. Is D, is 5 less than 6 or 7? No. Is 6 less than nothing? No. <coughs> uh, so, we recognize that the articulation points should be A and B. Um, actually, we know one other thing. I'm sorry, I, I misspoke. D, that will be uh, an articulation point because 5 is less than or equal to... Whoops. Jumped around here. I don't know what happened. Uh, 5 is less than or equal to uh, 6 and 5 is less than or equal to 7. So therefore, D is also an articulation point. So the articulation points are A, B, and D. Okay, so that's a full explanation, and uh, maybe we'll do another one real quick, and we'll go at full speed. So here we go. Uh, starting at A, we do a depth first search. So A, B, D, go to G, H, C, and E. And then F. So 1, which we know will be 1. Uh, next one is 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, 8. Perfect. Okay. And then we go through and we find the lowest it can get to. So A, B. B's lowest is, in fact, itself. <coughs> D. Uh, D's lowest is... Uh, 2, because it can go from here to here, back to 2. Uh, G, G's lowest is 2 as well. H's lowest is 5. E's lowest is 7. C's lowest is 6. And F's lowest is 8. So we look at this real quick. Um, is A an articulation point? Well, it has more than two children, so yes, A, in fact, is an articulation point. Yay! And we look and we say, is F an articulation point? Well, no it's not, because F is not less than whatever it has. Um, which, or, and it has nothing, so it's not an articulation point. And we know immediately E and C wouldn't be articulation points, because it has no children. And we can look at B. B, um, so is 2 less than or equal to 2 or 2. Yes, turns out it is. That means E is an articulation point as well. We look at G is, um, whoop, sorry, it keeps jumping back on me. So G is 4 less than or equal to um, B, which is 2, or 5. Turns out 4 is not uh, less than uh, 2, but it is less than 5, which makes G an articulation point as well. Lastly, is 5 less than 7 or 6? And yes, it is. So the articulation points are A, B, G, and H. How about you do this final example yourself, and I'll give you the, ample, er, the answer in a second.